Shrija, who is uh, one of my senior colleague here, who started this patient and got the initial hemodynamics. This is a lady of around 35 years, identified to have a large atrial septal defect, severe pulmonary hypertension. You'll see the PowerPoint. Yeah. Good morning, all. This is 35 years female, a mother of two children, who was uh, having complaints of uh, breathlessness on exertion and occasional chest pain since last six months. On examination, weight of 36 kg, saturation is 98 percent. First heart sound is normal. Second heart sound is wide and fixed split. There is loud P2, and there is pan systolic murmur at left lower sternum, sternum border. ECG shows QRS axis of plus 120 degrees, so there is right axis deviation with incomplete RBBB pattern and STD changes in right precordial leads. X-ray shows uh, CTR of 68 percent. Sorry, cardiomegaly, right atrial embla enlargement, MPN branch pins are dilated and there is no pleural effusion. So this is a apical four chamber view showing massively dilated RA RV. Uh, RA measures six by around six by six uh, centimeter and there is mild RV dysfunction. Again, the apical four chamber view showing moderate TR, RVSP is 105 plus RA, and there is large 24 millimeter ostium secundum AG, which is shunting left to right. IVC is dilated, measuring 19 millimeter, collapsing minimally with the respiration. With so these are the T images showing large ASD, which is shunting left to right, with deficient retro aortic margin. This is the NFAS view showing three, uh, 3D re reconstruction of uh, ASD. So final diagnosis is large 24 millimeter ostium secundum ASD with deficient re retro aortic rim shunting left to right, RA RV dilated, severe pH with RVSP of 105 plus RA. So this is the basal hemodynamic data which you got. Uh, SVC saturations of 57% and IVC of 65% and there is a step of from uh, SVC to PA, PA saturation being 81.6%. Uh, in the pressures, RA, RA pressures uh, of 18 A waves uh, and mean, pressure, mean RA pressure of 14. RV is 90 systolic with EDP of 16. PA pressures are 100 uh, by 40 with mean of 58 pulmonary veins uh, 14 and aorta being 140 by 100 with mean of 125. So basal QP is 6.8 liters per minute, QS of 2.6 liters per minute, QPQS of 2.6, PVR is uh, 6.4 woods unit, SVR is 69.2, PVR is uh, 7.9 woods unit meter square and SVR is 48.3 uh, 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 woods unit meter square. So, a uh, plan is ice guided fenestrated ASD device closure after oxygen study. Okay, so uh, an interesting, challenging case, uh, Shiva, one that we're faced with fairly frequently, and in particular in Asia and Far East. Bharat, you're an expert on these. Uh, uh, what do you think of the hemodynamics and the, the size of the ASD? Show the PowerPoint the uh, once again. I think, uh, as far as uh, this patient is concerned, I'm quite optimistic. I think uh, given the fact that uh, the shunt. baseline shunt is so good, given the fact that the pulmonary artery diastolic pressures are just 40 and the mean pressure ratio is almost 2.5 is to 1, I think uh, uh, I would be happy just closing this ASD and starting the patient on pulmonary vasodilators. So, so you wouldn't do uh, no, balloon I occlusion? No, no, no I don't think pressures. that in this case I would really consider doing anything. Okay, you, you I think it looks saturation. good to me. Okay. Uh, Jeetmar, is that what you would do as well? or uh? For me, it's a clear indication to make a fenestration, a fenestrated ASD occluder. Yeah, but you would go straight for closure. Yes, you wouldn't do anything else. Fenestrated. Yeah. And Nick? I would go for a fenestrated uh, yeah. ASD occluder. Yes. Zeit? Well, uh, I, I think uh, this is something to discuss. The, the PVR in the instruction for use for these devices is less than... The PVR has to be less than eight woods units, and then it says you can close it. So this patient has 2.6 to 1 left to right shunt. His PVR is 6, right? You can see that on, on the screen. So the question is, why do we need a fenestrated ASD device in this patient? I wouldn't. This, you can do this case with a regular ASD device. Put him on antipulmonary hypertensive therapy for six months. Okay, what's your backup plan if things go wrong with the pulmonary artery pressures? Um, I, I, I don't, they don't think fall. if the data is correct, things should not go wrong. Yeah, That's but the if key. they do, what's yeah, but, your backup plan? But the, po the point is the following, and we, we all know that if you have elderly patients, 
60s, 70s with an ASD in these wood units, then you say, hmm, this is a long-standing left to right Chinese etc. That's a young lady. And even at her young age, she has eight wood units, 7.9 wood units times square meter or meter square. So this, this means there may be, in addition, not only the left to right shunders so underlying. Right. Would you then close this straight off with a de uh, normal device? without balloon occlusion, testing, pulmonary pressures, and, uh, and uh, so on? I would absolutely go forward and close this defect. Uh, see, uh, Shaq, we have really looked at our data in yeah. this particular subset of patients. These are young adults, and this subset is very commonly seen in India and other eastern part of the world. Yeah. Other, other uh, these are young adults who have significant pulmonary hypertension, and some of them come with a very large baseline shunt and have a, a low pulmonary artery diastolic pressure and a very large anatomical defect. Yep. These are the patients who are known to do very well following their closure oh, on pulmonary vasodilators with most of them pressures dropping to less than 50%. Yeah. In the so long run. Is this 24 millimeter ASD out of proportion to the amount of pulmonary hypertension, do you think, or not? Is this compatible? I think that in this subset, I, I have a reason to believe that a part of this pulmonary hypertension is flow related, and you will see over a period of time, once you cut down the flow, okay. the pulmonary artery pressure so it, will drop. In down. the audience, show of hands, those who would close this defect with a normal, non fenestrated device. Normal. Okay. Good. And those who would use a fenestrated Quickly device, uh, well, that's very helpful. Uh, Shiva, it's 50-50 for you. Okay. So you'll have to phone a friend now. Shaka. Shaka, uh, I want... Shiva, you're going to do what you're going to do. Uh, Shaka. Uh, uh, Shiva, hold on. Jay Young's got a question or comment to make. Jay Young? Oh, uh, it's a comment. Uh, I, I believe that uh, most of the, the patients like this uh, doing well after closure. But uh, in very small portion of patient, they may show the, some aggravation or the less improvement after closure. So we should be careful. Uh, if you close uh, 100 patients like this, and if uh, you experience uh, three, four patients who have a significant residual pulmonary artery hypertension, it's going to be a problem. So I'm def definitely uh, close with the fenestrated. Fenestrated. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, an another short comment. It depends where the patient comes from. If you're from high altitude, I would definitely with fenestration. This oh, is. Uh, this I suspect this is low altitude. Uh, yeah, it is uh, a low altitude. In, uh, in uh, South India. Yeah. Most of the, most of the places in South India uh, are of low altitude. Yeah. Kanan? See, in my opinion, fenestrated AC device helps only in those patients who develop high LA pressure following AC device closure. It is who have high LV. High LA pressure. After. Following AC closure, large AC. So okay. the fenestration helps them in reducing the LA pressure and preventing the immediate post-op pulmonary edema, but not in such cases. These cases, either you decide to close or not to close. If you decide to close, it's a regular AC device closure. I will go for regular AC device closure. Okay. Regular. There, 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 there are two yeah. reasons okay. to have an yeah. Hold on, Nick. Nick. Yeah. We'll come back to this. Uh, Shiva, because otherwise we'll run out of time. Shaka, go Shaka, I, the proponents of... Uh, Direct ASD closure, uh, who without any fenestration, were also adding one more caveat. They said that they will give six months pulmonary vasodilator, one year pulmonary vasodilator. Why then? Why do you want to give? So that means there is an ambiguity of the decision making process. That means there is a role in partially closing months. it. Not six months, Shiva. They may require pulmonary vasodilators lifelong. Lifelong. And believe me, in even with your fenestration, don't think that they are not going to require pulmonary vaso okay. vasodilator. So, so, Shiva. so if, if there is a role for pulmonary vasodilator, do you think there is a role in partially fenestrating them rather than completely closing? Show hemodynamics live. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that don't do it, but I would, in my practice, given this hemodynamic data and this clinical hemodynamics picture, live. Would not, uh, would not hesitate closing the defect Shiva, completely. Let me get you to do things whilst we're discussing as well, so because otherwise we won't progress. Yeah. Okay. I think one important point to consider is what were his this patient's saturation six months ago before he started hemopulmonary vasodilator therapy. This patient has pure left to right shunt. So I am not sure why you need a fenestrated AST device. Zahid, with pure Zahid this, is the, this is the pulmonary artery pressure after 20 minutes of oxygen now. The, okay. The pulmonary... What was the sat? Uh, 
six months ago at rest in no, uh, sat at home. Saturation oh, even today is normal, 98%. Even today is full. Normal. Normal. Okay. It is spontaneous breathing. Hello? Spontaneous breathing, the patient. Oh, it's it's, it is a normal sinus rhythm. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, is the patient on ventilator or spontaneously no, breathing? Spontaneous breathing. She's just uh, on mask oxygen. Okay. Okay. Uh, she's fully conscious, yeah, okay. fully breathing on her own, listening to our conversation. Okay. Relax. Okay. Mm. So, uh, there we are, 100% or uh, oxygen treatment. There's the pulmonary artery pressure. What do you do? 92, 37, 56. Again, what? What will you do now? He's showing the pulmonary artery pressure in oxygen. Yeah, in oxygen, I would not, never Hello. use oxygen for testing a patient with a shunt with, uh, oxy with oxygen because uh, all calculations are wrong uh, afterwards. So uh, I would look, as uh, Barrett have mentioned it, to the diastolic pressure gradient is 0 0.4. Those the patient have a reactivity of the pulmonary artery system. I can see it by the numbers. But again, why an ASD patient becomes symptomatic? Why a patient becomes symptomatic in 60 right. years, in 30 years, in 20 years? That very is the quick. most yeah, important... Very quickly, because we're already in the other lab. Right. So See, there is a very wide pulse pressure in the pulmonary artery. Yep. So it's majority of flow related. The diastolic pressure is so low. I'm sure once it closes the ASD, on table itself, our systolic pressure will be much lower than 93. Okay. Right, Shiva, uh, uh, Tin is pushing us as well, so we need you to do either make a decision or proceed. Sure, okay. So what are you going to do? I, we are, I see the... The pulmonary artery pressure at the end of 20 minutes of oxygen is not showing any reduction in the PA pressure. I agree that there is a 2.6 is to 1 left right shunt. The basal PVR index is close to 8 wood units. I feel that this, is, yeah. this ASD should be closed with a fenestrated device because you can always Thank you. go back and if you want to enlarge the fenestration, Shiva, do it. You are right. Yeah, yeah, Shiva, go for it. We know you're going to do what you're going to do, so yeah. that's okay. But, but also, uh, this is controversial in many ways, isn't it? As shown by the show of hands, it's 50-50. Yeah. You know, so, you, I mean, you're not going to listen to guidelines uh, or... Physiology is not democratic. No, Hello? no, no, Zahid, Zahid, <laughs> let me... No, no, let me, let us make it clear. What is the... What, on what guideline you are stating that you want a complete closure on this ASD yep. when the pulmonary artery pressure is not showing any Shiva, fall? don't shout. Shiva, don't shout. Turn the volume down and then carry on. Yeah. The, the thing is that we are not saying it on guidelines. We have our own data. Yeah. And uh, I have now nine patients whom I have followed for uh, over five years. And uh, this is what has happened. And this is the exact subset. Large hearts, young adults, large baseline shunts, low PA <laughs> diastolic pressure, and anatomically large defects. And they have done brilliantly, believe me. All of them? Okay, another quick comment. Uh, 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 yeah. Shiva, you keep going ahead. Don't stop. Go ahead. I just have a comment with regards to the conversation that's going on. Because I think fundamentally there's a little bit of a difference between a primary left to right shunt, increased PVR, and pulmonary hypertension versus this particular unique subset of what we call as ASD associated pulmonary hypertension. These are patients where you have some baseline pulmonary hypertension. They also have an ASD. They present a little bit earlier. And those are the ones that have a problem with regards to what we need to do, uh, whether to go what Bharat is talking about as a lifelong pulmonary vasodilator or what uh, Shiva is talking about with regards to fenestration. I think the jury is out there. I don't think we have an answer for that. But I certainly think there is a separate entity where you have ASD associated pulmonary hypertension. Yeah. I think the bottom line right. here is that Any both both approaches are correct. There isn't anything forceful about one versus the other, and therefore neither is wrong. So let's, uh, Shiva, uh, keep moving. Yeah. Get, get the sheet. Ask them to show the echo live. Not our faces, echo live. No, echo 50%, fluoro 50%, hemodynamic 50%, not our face, not the camera. They want to the other side. Bye, Alayda, Ma, Isra, Ma.
ఈశ్వరమ్మ భయం లేదే రిలాక్స్ ఆక్సిజన్ కెన్ బి డిస్కనెక్టెడ్ focus on the device so what have you done so far see uh, the the echocardiographic measurement of this hole was around 23 to 24 so we decided to use a 27 aclutec fenestrated device we normally don't 27 aclutec fenestrated yeah you are you able to see the fenestration yep. i'll show my finger yeah. take your hand away i think we see it better without your hand okay fine But, there you go but let me tell you one thing i will i will now sheath it inside and then yeah. show you after what size penetration is this 6 mm 6 so now yeah. i am getting it opened again now uh, you see that sometimes and is you the penetration doesn't fall in place properly and and uh, she was the patient is watching too yeah she's watching <laughs> yeah. she's being, being, she's being very, mindful of that i'm very interested in the penetration so yeah. you put a you loading a wire alongside the device yeah correct correct in order to get the uh, penetration coaxial after we get the device across so now this goes inside okay so i'm going to load it under water okay ప్రసిద్ధ శ్రీజ సో నవ్ ది హోల్ అసెంబ్లీ ఈస్ లోడెడ్ ఆన్ టు ది is the wire that you have placed through the fenestration is just when you, if you have to go and balloon this once you have deployed the device uh, correct actually to uh, in fact even otherwise i will balloon it the reason is to make things coaxial yeah at this point dr to, Shri, to make Shri, things complicated to make things complicated okay, yeah. okay. Uh, shiva is the patient in sinus rhythm or has some form of the, atrial tachycardia the patient had an atrial flutter and uh, we gave metoprolol and have right now is on a 2 is to 1 av nodal block Curren okay. currently we are giving amiodarone as an infusion to achieve a medical cardioversion of this flutter she was in sinus rhythm but if it doesn't get con- i i will so cardio would you not want to convert this rhythm i will cardiovert if uh, uh, would you not want to convert this uh, go on go on say additional say. reason for fenestration in i want to mention it Yes. It's an additional reason for fenestration. What? What's the additional reason? The atrial fibrillation or the atrial fluttering. Or oh, in case okay. you electrophysiologists yes. need yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Because, yes. yeah. Yes. Make it flat. Yeah. And okay. you have to consider why... You haven't happened. thought of it before, did had you? Now you have. No, 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 no. That is... Uh, <coughs> you have to consider why it becomes an ASD patient symptomatic. Yeah. and he becomes symptomatic because of arrhythmias he becomes okay. symptomatic okay. when he no, have no, a pulmonary no. hypertension or diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle uh, so you're yeah. doing this uh, largely with ice catheter yes. guidance or a combined fluoroscopy and ice Com- combined fluoroscopy and uh, take away our pictures uh, shows fluoroscopy yeah take the camera out okay yeah thank you mm. yeah now deploy the rad So at the moment the left atrial disc is around. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh I want a little bit better confirmation of the ASD device so Yeah. So there's something preventing it from becoming a flat disc. So what part part of it is maybe due to the wire also. The wire in the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so i i will just get it a little bit more aligned and then uh, uh, i am just pulling the wire so that it is free in the left atrium it, it goes flat now mm. yeah 
That's the so, maybe the financial system doesn't want to stay open. It says it's not needed. Poss <laughs> possible, yeah. <laughs> we can't see the discs very well on Fluoro, but uh, I think they're a bit flatter, aren't they? I think the left disc is much flatter now, yeah. Shiva. Flatter, yeah, yeah. So and now I, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting the uh, ice probe a bit better. You can really flatten it by putting a round balloon over the wire onto the left atrium and pull it back. Yeah, right now the, the, the disc is uh, configured well. Yeah. So what, what do you think? We haven't got a really good ice picture. Yeah, so actually the, there is some, uh, the sheath is uh, uh, tight for me. It's a 10 French Acunav system and uh, I am on a tighter uh, groin sheath. I'll try to, I'll try to sort this out. Okay. So the, the device configuration is good now. Yeah. Perhaps you could give us a trans thoracic picture too uh, when, when you finish. <laughs> sure, sure. Sh Shiva, we, we are just a little bit in time crunch. Okay. In about two minutes, we'll have to go back to 10. Okay. So if so you want to uh, sh show us. Okay, I'll, I'll in the next two minutes that'll be awesome. I, I, I will I will just uh, I'll I'll get the pictures, you go to tin and come back. Okay, we'll go to tin because uh, uh, your case I think there are a few more questions people will ask. So let's go to tin. Put a mustang through this. Shiva, we see your pictures. Shiva? Yeah, yeah, are you are you, see I, I will show you show the two previous pictures. Fluoro previous. Yeah, so fluoro. We bo we're back with you. Previous yes, fluoro. Sorry. Previous fluoro. Previous. Yeah. So what we did was uh, we uh, we uh, aligned the uh, fenestration across uh, with a balloon. Next picture. So then uh, the next picture. Next. Now we have taken out the uh, balloon out. Uh, show the fenestration on the echo, uh, Uma, color. So this is what size balloon and what type of balloon? It's a, it's a Boston Scientific Mustang, uh, seven millimeter balloon. Seven, okay. Okay. And what are you trying to do? Just making sure that the fenestration is circular? Uh, yeah, no, trying to make the left atrial part of the fenestration and right atrial part of the fenestration come coaxial to each other. I see, so okay. Shiva, so there is a, a significant increase in the tricuspid regurge. No. You think? Th there is the same, uh, the yeah. Dr. Bharat, we are, not, uh, we are not close to the tricuspid valve. Take out no, the... No, not because of that. Not because of that. Sometimes atrial arrhythmias can also do it. Mm. Yeah. It's not necessarily... It's it's that the was there before as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that, there, there was there was a elevated right atrial pressure of 14 millimeters prior to the procedure, and uh, right now I'm going to show you your pulmonary okay. artery pressure. Okay. Put, put a wire. The problem that I had with the intracardiac echo shack was a 10 French sheath which was going through the left groin, uh, your hand is getting exposed, take the hand, sir. which was uh, giving a lot of resistance to my manipulations. So I am, I am planning to upsize uh, the groin sheath, but since that is going to take a little while, I will show you the PA pressure. Yeah, PA pressure. Milad. What's the rationale behind coaxial position of the fenestration? I couldn't understand it. Um, okay, so the question here is that Milad didn't understand your coaxial uh, position of the fenestration. In the past, Can you explain it a bit more? Yeah. In the past, when we have fenestrated by customizing across an Amplazer device, we have realized that while we are making the fenestration, the left atrial and right atrial holes will be aligned properly. But you load it into your sheath, push it back, they will go off track. So. Right now, get a pick. 
So, so uh, we, have, uh, we have understood that if we try to make it coaxial, it's slightly better to keep a, a better uh, alignment of the two holes. Hemodynamics okay. live. So Hemodynamics anyway, uh, live. Yeah, so one of the reasons, initially in 2004 when we did the fen first fenestration actually with the by remember the fenestration has to go through the right disc, the waist, and the left disc, right? So once by the time you put the device in, the alignment is not good. So okay. in fact, we had camera a tent couple. So, so camera peer pressure out. hemodynamics. Thanks to the hemodynamics, yeah. peer pressures are impressive. So now we, we have the clear indication for the fenestration. I want to repeat it. The diastolic pressure is higher than before. The resistance, the calculated resistance was seven to eight. Some surgeons say that is un not suitable for operation. So now the Zoom patient the needs okay, uh, maybe a drug treatment. But in the other side, every ASD patient with a pulmonary hypertension have a disposition, a genetic disposition for pulmonary hypertension. And to have this patient on the pop-off ventil for the right to left chanting, but even for left to right chanting, if the left ventricle have a restriction. It's so enormous important, I can't only say, yeah. I yeah. want to Thank say it and I want to tell it in the world. Uh, you, you are in 80%, you are right that you don't need it. But if you need it, you can be happy yeah. that you have it. Dietmar, you are very emotional and I appreciate that, but still there is no need for this administration. Well, I think there is. Yeah. This, this argument will carry on. We'll never have a solution to it. But uh, the only uh, question I wanted to ask you, Shiva, is uh, do you plan to convert this patient into sinus rhythm in the yeah, lab yeah. itself? Right. Because it has a lot of implications right. in terms of post-procedural uh, management. Right now, I'm going to cardiovert her electrically. Yep. Uh, get her Before back you to release the device. Exactly. Because Exactly. That is the yep. that is always the protocol. We will we will, before release we are going to cardiovert her. Sedation Great. with uh, ketamine thirty and midas okay. two. So, so shall we Shaq, uh, leave you at the moment? Shaq, to about uh, fifteen minutes later I will show you an intracardiac echo picture with a uh, with a larger okay. femoral sheet. All right, we'll come back and uh, get an update. Very quickly, uh, Hujat uh, Murtazia has uh, got a comment uh, or a question. Uh, uh, I have a question. Um, is possible we do contrast echo at now for showing the left to right or right to left shunt at now? Well, they can see that on color at the moment. We see on color. It is left to right shunting. With a sheath, uh, if, you do a, okay. if you do a bubble study with a sheath where it is, right. you'll have some right to left shunting because it's directed at the fenestration. And with the mm. color, it's a pure left to right yeah. shunt. Yep. OK. Uh, so Shiva, we'll come back to you later on. Sure, sure. Yep. But excellent demonstration of this case. A very educational indeed. OK. Shiva, we yeah. uh, can see the floral images. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm able to hear you well. Can you show the color across the uh, uh, fenestration? Okay. Uh, Shaq, the Shaq, are you here, uh, seeing the uh, intracardiac echo? Uh, echo bigger? Uh, can you make the echo picture bigger? Yeah, echo bigger. And take the fluoro off. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So, so we see we see Shant for sure on, on yeah. Uh, you think this is through and through? Yeah, through and through. Uh, the I, I I will give one okay. uh, contrast. Uh, can you can you uh, go uh, without color live? Live. Well, that blue pressure is aortic pressure or a pulmonary artery pressure? It's a blue is the aortic pressure. What has happened is I gave amiodarone and metoprolol, so she continues to be in a junctional rhythm. Make the fluoro, uh, uh, hemodynamics bigger. Hemodynamics bigger. I would think that it may be worth, you know, trying to give adequate fluids if RA pressures are low and maybe some ionotropes to get the pressures a little up. Yeah, we, we are be a little uncomfortable if the patient is awake yeah, and the pressures are this low. Bharat, but if the patient is awake and talks to you, you don't have to. No, Bharat, actually, the is low. no, what happened was for the DC version, I had given some midazolam. Okay. That midazolam reduced oh, the okay, pressure. Okay, okay. And uh, on the okay, top, on the top okay, of fine. it, we also gave some uh, beta blocker. Show the fenestration okay. now. Okay, I understand. 
I, I understand. Okay, it shows the uh, uh, echo or fenestration yeah. color doppler. Yeah, echo bigger? Yeah. You are able to see uh, the uh, flow. Basically, since she is breathing in and out, there are times at which the fenestration comes in picture and then times at which the fenestration goes out. You are able to see the hole in the left atrial disc, a round circular hole. Shiva, I'd see a lot of flow inside the discs. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I mean, I think I agree with you that there is definitely has to be some left to right flow or shunting through the, but we, I mean, I, it may be very difficult because they are not aligned. You were looking with transthoracic echo, sometimes either can you, trans thoracic or transesophageal. Can you see that now? Uh, gives you better make, flow. The, make the picture bigger. Uh, can you see that on the corner? I mean, we see on the right side. Yeah. Kevin has a comment. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. <coughs> I wonder where you're sort of Zoom out. about the alignment Zoom out. of the Zoom. discs, you know, by, with you know, your wiring thing, whether you'd actually be better to put an atrial flow restrictor in the fenestration mm -hmm. and line it up. I think a stent, which I think people have, have done, probably protrudes a bit. Mm -hmm. too much in these cases, but you, you have access to you the too much zoom atrial flow restriction. Yeah. The zoom. And they probably fit in quite nicely in these yeah, devices. Yeah, yeah. We actually put Cori stents inside these when we started. Did you give uh, no epinephrine? Yeah, but gonna, right? we're going to jut out a lot. Okay. But, but you're right, Shiva, so flow restrictor may be better. Uh, Shiva, did yeah. you give no epinephrine a little bit? Uh, no, I gave atropine. 20. Atropine. I would give uh, no epinephrine, no, no. not atropine. We should move otherwise. Because the patients have a very low pressure and a yeah. heart rate. Shiva, I think we have demonstrated the fenestration. We could leave you alone yeah. while you um, are able to increase, improve our pressure, then we can come back to you sure. when you have another case. Sure. We can go back to our talks, if that's okay with you. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. all right, sure. thank, thank you, you. Thank very you much. much. Okay. Uh, Shiva, you're live. Uh, Zahid, uh, we had uh, yeah, metoprolol and amiodarone induced uh, sinus bradycardia with junctional rhythm. Uh, right now, uh, uh, then the patient is on and off, coming back into sinus rhythm. You can see that uh, there are uh, times at which she is in junction, there are times at which she is coming back to sinus. The pulmonary artery pressure is about 53 mean, and the iota is 97 mean. Uh, the intracardiac echo is showing the left-right flows. And uh, we are just getting re getting ready to release the device. Okay. So I mean, I think it's a better flow on echo now. I know we don't see the left side, but definitely it shows that the fenestration is open because there is definitely left to right shunt. Yeah. The the right? the rhythm part. If you look at the ECG, make the ECG bigger. Uh, ECG bigger. So uh, she she uh, comes back to sinus rhythm occasionally, but. Uh, uh, stays in a, uh, see, see, there are, there are the, the, the second and third beat are sinus. So mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's yet to fully come back from the effect of amiodarone and uh, beta blocker. So I'm going okay. to, I'm going Shiva, to release. What medication? Um, yeah. No. Shiva has a question. Shiva. Yes. Super, super good job. My question is, which uh, drugs did you use for resuscitation the patient? Uh, and the, the second question is, what is the gradient across uh, the fenestration? You see in relative high flow. Yeah, okay. So, Put the Doppler. And what is the right, right atrial pressure? And to estimate the left atrial pressure. And I think the, the lady is young, but maybe is she... Is it? Yeah. See, the, the, inter what is it? the intraatrial four. gradient is less than one millimeters of mercury. It's four. Yeah, okay. a little less than so four. the left atrial pressure is four millimeter higher than the right. What is the right atrial pressure now? Uh, see, the, I have to take out the, the ice catheter because uh, there is a leak of the hemostatic valve. So if I take out the yes. ice catheter, yes. then I can get you the right atrial pressure. Yes. This fenestration have a good chance for resuscitation if you have a right failing as a left heart failing or a combination of both. So I, I guess... And it is very nice to show this uh, color flow uh, uh, for monitoring, even in a critical situation. It's a very nice tool. Pluralbic? Okay. Uh, any other questions from the audience? Comments? So the device is released okay. now. Shiva, Jay has a question or a comment. Yeah. So, 
there was some discussion about the, the fenestration is needed or not in this patient, but uh, in many patients with a severe pulmonary arterial hypertension, the patient may uh, the, show uh, intermittent uh, aggravation according to the respiratory disease. Or in this patient, there was uh, some atrial uh, the arrhythmia. The patient uh, developed the atrial arrhythmia. The pulmonary arterial pressure may aggravate. So, so and also, also exercise may induce uh, some aggravation of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, in for the patient safety, this kind of patient, I think, uh, the definitely fenestration is needed. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay, just a simple comment for Shiva regarding when the device takes uh, a copra shape in the left uh, side. Yeah. So maybe due to uh, undersizing the sheath or keeping the device for longer time in the sheath. Uh, but most of the time we use balloon and we don't succeed to fix it. And we found it useful to pass catheter and tip deflector and uh, fix it by tip defl uh, deflected uh, catheter. Show the right atrial so pressure. Did you hear the question? Or? Yeah, yeah tip, tip deflector for uh, ch like uh, changing the, uh, mo the profile of the device. Uh, yeah. Yeah, to reform the device and to fix the copra shape, the, 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 or copra or the abnormal position of the lift, lift atrial disc, sometimes it takes funny shape. So we used before balloons and we failed, but the tip deflector is fast. In a, in a catheter, Judkins catheter and tip deflector, and put it behind it and fix it, it it's faster. We found it faster than the balloon. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Shiva, so show us the right atrial pressure. This is and then right uh, now. If it's no, okay, atrial we atrial pressure bigger. Right atrial pressure bigger. This is the right atrial pressure live. It's 19 millimeters of mercury. Zahid, what do you feel? Is fenestration a good option or uh, is fenestration uh, like you would have closed fully? I don't know. I don't know, uh, Shiva, the hemodynamics are not very stable. You see the systemic pressure is back to 90. Yeah. PA pressures are back to 21. So, you know... No, no, PA, that, is, that is not really PA pressure. A... That is right atrial pressure. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. PA pressure is 48. But the systemic mean. pressure is 90. Yeah. You see, uh, Dr. Bharat, still we have and not the got this sinus rhythm. Yeah, that is what my worry is. And my next question to you is, since she is going into intermittent atrial fibrillation, your post-procedural protocol for antiplatelets or anticoagulation is going to be anything different than normal. Yeah, actually, I give dual antiplatelets for all the fenestrated ASD device. We have, we have done five of them so far. And uh, all of them we are maintaining on aspirin plus Plavix. And uh, they, they, we are not stopping them at the end of uh, one year. Uh, the longest uh, patency is uh, a patient with uh, three years, and it is still continuing to be patent. The patient has uh, moderate uh, levels of pulmonary artery hypertension, around 60 to 70 PA pressure even now, is on pulmonary vasodilator as well. The problem that we are having in this particular patient is possibly a drug-induced sinus suppression. See, still she is in a junctional uh, rhythm. She has not come back to a stable sinus rhythm. It's not atrial fibrillation. It is uh, junctional rhythm. Okay. Yeah, Seema, any last thoughts? Um, if you're done, we're going to leave you with excellent uh, demonstration of two good cases that you showed us, three actually. And if you have another case in the next 40 minutes, we'll be happy to come back to you. Uh, no, my, uh, my, any last, my last next, word for uh, my, you? My next tech presentation is for the coarctation session. So uh, nothing more for the pulmonary hypertension. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.